Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to address what I think is the Boss GT1000 Core's biggest downfall and really you can apply this to the full Boss GT1000 as well. That's the fact that it only has one reverb block. Uh, you've only got one block that you can put a reverb on within any preset which to me is a bit of a limitation but there is a way around it and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now before I get into showing you how to do this workaround, if you are enjoying the video and you like the content on the channel, please do consider uh, subscribing to the channel, liking the video and all that good stuff. We really do appreciate it and it really does help. Cheers. Right, so I've got my Boss GT1000 core connected to my Mac and I've got a pretty simple preset going. Uh, I've got the editor open. Uh, yeah, we just got an amp and a cab going at the minute and it sounds a bit like this. So yeah, just a simple amp sound for now. Uh, now I do want to add a little bit of reverb. So I've got the uh, reverb block over here and I'm going to turn it on. It's set to room currently. So I'll play that now. So the problem now is I'm kind of stuck with that one reverb in this patch. There's no other reverb blocks and you could maybe tweak one of the delay blocks to get uh, the reverb sound that you want, but, but that's not what we're gonna do today. If you look at the patch, you can see my settings over here. You've got uh, time at 1.5 seconds. We've got the uh, tone dial back a bit to you know make it a little bit darker. Uh, effect level is fairly low at 27. So now if I want to uh, switch in a different reverb, uh, the only way I can do that is using the assign settings. Uh, the assign settings are all up in your kind of control uh, slash expression uh, box up here. So if I click on here, uh, it's gonna take me straight to the assign because that's where I was last, but by default, it'll probably open you on this uh, control function page. So if we look at the assign, you can see I've got three assigns set up already. So the first one I'm gonna look at is the reverb type. Uh, I've got that in number three, but really it doesn't matter what order you have these in, in the assign menu at all. Um, so you can see here from the preview, some of the settings, but let's have a closer look. So you can see here, I've got target category as reverb, and then I've got the target parameter as type, and that's what's gonna let us switch between the two different reverb types within one preset. So target minimum, uh, I've got set to room, and target maximum, I've got to set to shimmer. So I've gone with shimmer just so we can have a real obvious uh, effect that you can hear the difference with. So I've got a couple of extra boss foot switches connected to my GT1000 core. Uh, you'll see that in the pedal cam. I'm using one of those switches uh, for this setup, but you can use any of the uh, three switches on the pedal itself as well and achieve the same thing. Uh, I've just expanded mine to get more functionality out of it. One other thing you'll see, mine is set up to uh, momentary. Uh, the reason mine's set like that is I've got these uh, FS7 switches in latching mode so that when you press them, the LED stays on. If you have these switches set in non-latching mode, uh, the light will just come on and go off as you press a button, uh, but it does mean that the menus get a little bit confusing. So I kind of have to set them the opposite to how they're set on the actual foot switch. So if you're doing this and you've got your foot switches in momentary mode, you'll use toggle. Uh, if you've got them set up in latching mode like I have, you'll use moment. So that's the first assigned setting. Uh, we're not using any of the other pages on here. We're just using page one. So we've looked at reverb type, and really if you just wanted to change the type of reverb but keep the settings the same, that's all you'd have to do. But what I want to do is go from like quite a small room reverb to a really big uh, shimmer reverb that's you know really obvious, mainly so you guys can hear it, uh, but also you know you might want to do that, right? You might want to go from something really subtle to something big and atmospheric. So to achieve that, I'm only really changing two settings. Uh, the first one is reverb time. So you can see again, we've got target category set to reverb, uh, target parameter set to time, and then I've got the minimum and the maximum for the target as well. So what this is gonna do is gonna switch between those two time settings 
as you press the foot switch. And again, I've got it set to control four, which is uh, the B switch on this foot switch over here. Um, so all of these uh, assigns are gonna be set to the same foot switch so that when we hit that one uh, button, it's gonna change all of these at once. Again, set to momentary for the same reason I explained previously. And we're not using any of these other pages. And then finally, the other thing I'm changing is effect level. So if I show you here, again, we're going from a really low effect level to quite a, a full effect level. So again, we've got the target category set to reverb and we've got the target parameter set to effect level. And then we've got the minimum set really quite low and the maximum set quite high. Again, momentary for this, but if you're using a non-latching switch, make sure you set it to toggle. And then we've got page two, we're not doing anything there. Same again on page three. I'm gonna close that down. And then the last thing you need to do, uh, once you set this up, these won't be turned on by default, so you just need to make sure that they're turned on. You can see in my patch, they are. So I've got the reverb on off set up on my other foot switch on uh, foot switch B as well. So I can just show you this again. So there's no reverb there at all. I'm gonna turn the reverb on. There's a reverb on. Now, if you look at the screen recording, you'll see that we have room one in the type right here, and the minimum time is set quite low. Uh, the effect level is set quite low. So if I hit my other foot switch that we configured with all those assigned settings, it's gonna change all of that. So now it's showing a shimmer, the time's gone up, and the effect level's gone up. Before I mentioned about these foot switches being in latching mode and the reason I've done that is so that the LEDs stay on once they're pressed. So you can see right now that both these LEDs are on. This foot switch is controlling the reverb on off and this foot switch is controlling the change of reverb type and those effect levels and what have you. Uh, so I can see just by looking at my foot switch that my reverb is turned on and that I'm in shimmer mode at the moment. And now if I turn the shimmer mode off by pressing that foot switch, and if you check on the screen recording as well, over here you'll see all of the settings change. Uh, you'll see my light goes out and I go back to a room reverb. So there you go. Helps if you have the guitar turned up. And I'll turn the reverb off altogether. So that's it. Now the really cool thing about that is you can apply that anywhere, not just a reverb. So you can also apply that on delays. So we do have more delay blocks in the GT1000, but most of them are fairly standard delays. Uh, it's only really the master delay block where you can choose from the different uh, types of delays like space echo and what have you. So you can do the same thing on the master delay block, but also you can do it on effects blocks as well. A similar limitation to both the delay and the reverb is the chorus block. So it's quite handy that you have a separate chorus block. So if you wanna use chorus, you're not taking up one of the effects blocks. However, that chorus block is limited to just like a kind of stereo or mono chorus, if I remember rightly. Um, so within the effects blocks, you have access to the CE1 chorus. And that's actually, you know, my preferred kind of chorus sound. But you might not want to use up a whole effects block in a patch just use the CE1. But there is a way around it using this method. You could set up your normal effect that you want to be in one of those effects blocks and then you can use this method to switch out to the CE1. You're not just limited to those three different settings that I changed, you can change basically anything you want using the assign. So you can you know, switch out using a foot switch to the CE1 if you wanna use it for just one song and then switch it back with the same method. And yeah, you've stopped yourself sacrificing an effects block to uh, achieve that sound with the CE1. So the drawback of this approach is that it does, of course, take up one of your foot switches for the controller signs. And if you're using the GT1000 core, for example, on its own without any additional switches, 
uh, you're going to fast run out of uh, switches, right? Obviously, I've expanded my GT1000 core with a couple of additional foot switches. And if you're using the regular GT1000, it's probably not an issue, but it's something to bear in mind. So for me, this was just a way of making the GT1000 a little bit more the kind of multi-effects processor that I was hoping it was going to be. So look, this is a bit of a workaround. It's not perfect. You're not going to get trails, for example, if you switch between the two different reverb types. Um, sometimes there can be a bit of a kind of sound glitch if you change, so you're probably not going to want to change this sort of uh, mid strumming a chord or something like that. It's really for, you know, you're working within a single patch, uh, you, there's a brief pause and you want to switch to a different reverb or something like that. You know, my setup for the GT1000 is literally I have one preset uh, and it's just integrated into my pedal board so that I have all the different types of effects I want to use, that I can switch in between and what have you. And for me, this approach just really worked. I think it would have been better if Boss could have let you use reverbs in some of those effects blocks. That probably would have been the perfect solution uh, to this issue, but unfortunately you can't. So for now, this is just a method that I discovered to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Well, I hope that's been helpful and you've learned something or maybe you know, you've know you found out some new features in a GT1000 that you weren't aware of. Uh, if you do have any questions about any of that, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I've been Jason for Pedal Boards of Doom. If you want any more videos like this, let us know. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.